Now, yes. Ted, is there and is there is is there like you said that you there is a there's the process of once the analysis comes back from the the metabolomics this multiomics analysis with all yeah. this mass spectrometry and liquid chromatography and stuff like that all this complicated technological equipment they come back and all these numbered readouts they're showing the they're they're comparing right you gave you gave this um really good example you said they're they're comparing the individual to the reference population so the yes. reference population is like thousands and thousands of people and the and the average is yes. and then your individual is either in the red or in the you know in the on, yes. on either of these two sides or in the screen and yeah yes yeah. at that particular age at okay. that age too, yeah, that age, age specific, right. it's very which important. is very important. Because for example, right. yeah. uh, the, uh, and, and this is an example that I give, you know, most, most people don't know that when you get a value of a, a thyroid hormone, they don't know what the, the reference range is just there. Either you're hypothyroid or hyperthyroid and you're given a range, right? That's an illness medicine range. What, you know, they didn't know that the way that got collected initially was that was the thyroid hormone levels of uh, uh, for anywhere, anywhere from three years old to 94 years old. So yeah. why should I rely on that particular data collection, right? Uh, yeah. How am I going to optimize if that's a range? Yeah, that's good for illness, right? But it's not going to be good for optimizing health, you see? So you have to go to the optimal range when your body was physiologically supposed to be at its best. Right. Yes. Yes. And then, so, and then now teach us, teach us about this. So if there's, um, a, a, you know, let's take me tw 27. Um, we say, we give my, um, continuous stool and urine, um, samples, and we're getting back the, this biometric metabolomic yeah. readouts. Um, now when, when we're, when you're consult, like, let's say you're consulting me as the client, um, right? This is, again, this is way pre, this is health optimization. There's no, um, this is pre any, um, any suboptimal levels. Um, now, now let's say that um, when you get the readout b back and you're analyzing it and you see that there's maybe the beginnings of a suboptimal level here, here. Now, walk us through this process. How do you know what supplements for, for me or what, um, what physical interventions for me to go do, um, what nutrition, what sleep, uh, how yes. do you know these yeah, specific things? Okay. Yeah. Um, and now you're, or you are now in the realm of lifestyle. That's why the other omics are in there. Okay. Uh, so when, when I get it, I, I, treat it exactly as illness medicine doctors would do it, right? It's like, okay, here's what you're deficient in, but I will move the entire network, not just one, right? You know that all of those, for example, there's the anti-oxygen regeneration network, right? It's vitamin E and there's, you know, lipoic acid and so, and vitamin C and so on. They're, they're regenerated by one another. You cannot just race one of those antioxidants without erasing others. So you have to have a knowledge of how these things are wired together, how the, how the uh, uh, chemistry is networked by the body, right? To, to regenerate its own antioxidants, for example. And you, you have yeah. to know which particular, which particular amino acids, uh, you know, would be, uh, for example, you are... Uh, you, you know, uh, I, I see that you, you lack vitamin B6. Automatically, I should know that you probably are also suffering from some form of um, a mild depression or just uh, feeling the blues, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, vitamin B6 is responsible for, is, is a cofactor in the generation of a serotonin uh, neurotransmitter. So there's a lot of stuff that yeah. uh, fundamental that you should be knowing, you know, uh, when, when you're making this, uh, this protocol. So when you come to me, I look at that as a whole, right? It's not piecemeal. The difference that I do with illness medicine doctors is that, A, okay, I tell illness medicine doctors, here it is, here are the results. What they do is they try to just give everything. You can't, right? Because you have to know which one is networked to what. 
And that's your value as a health optimization doctor or practitioner, is that's a yeah. value you provide, is you know all of that, right? Now you also know okay. that these things are affected by nutrition. Your gut microbiota, for example, uh, in as little as uh, 72 hours, you know, when you're eating, you, you travel to a different country and you're eating different food, your microbiota will change drastically, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it will change its... Uh, the way the way it's absorbing food, you know, uh, the, the it's like an ecosystem in there. Some of the um, uh, species will grow more, some will grow less. When you're in Italy eating too much pasta, you know, then your your carbohydrate lo loving uh, um, organisms will uh, overgrow. You know, so these are the kinds of things now that affect, right? Uh, so when you're like, for example, I had a I had a a patient, a client, in fact the doctor who loved eating canned food, right? And even if, even if tin is already banned in, in mm -hmm. the canning process, mm -hmm. you know, he's old enough to accumulate, you know, before the banning of tin, right? So you could actually see the tin levels, right? Mm -hmm. And this is why I don't emphasize the, the genome. It's because the genome, you cannot see mercury toxicity in the genome. Mm. You cannot see cadmium toxicity in the Interesting. genome. Interesting. The, yeah. the farther you go away from, from the genome, right? So there's yeah. genome, the proteome, and the metabolome. And transcriptome, so, genome, transcriptome, yeah, proteome, yeah. metabolome. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So the farther yeah. you get away from that, the, the more you get into the physiological and the environmental effects. On yes, it, yes, right? yes, and, yes. And so now that's where the exposome comes in, right? The exposome yeah. is your total environmental exposure to yeah. things yes, like, yes. Uh, you know, to, to phototoxicity, the kinds of light that you use, right? The you EMF, gave, you right? gave these examples uh, in the, in the talk you used, um, you used as your examples, you gave el el electromagnetic smog today is hundreds of times greater than 130 years ago. And 5G is coming around the corner. People have electromagnetic hypersensitivity. We the stress on the living cells, disturbing immune yeah. systems, creating oxidative stress, inhibiting tissue repair. So what, so that's this, that's this exosome. Yes. Yeah, that's the exposome. So, so the role of a health organization doctor is to identify, you know, what is it in your exposome uh, that is beneficial or um, harmful to your health, right? Because part of your exposome is a nagging spouse. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the, 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 the stress. It increases that, uh, cortisol. It, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's part of it. And even, you know, uh, they already showed that... Uh, you know, uh, partners who sleep, who sleep together where there's uh, one partner is snoring, they show that for each snore, you know, the cortisol spikes in the partner that doesn't snore. That's so, so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the, studies like this have already been done and they're fun, right? But the, the, the thing is, they do have an impact on your health. Absolutely. Uh, um, the other thing- Or on, know, the, on, the, light, Rupert, you know, on the Rupert Sheldrake level, we could talk about it as like a morphic field in a sense. Um, yeah, in and, a we're, sense. And, and we're right there next to each other, creating these exposomic uh, 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 interplays uh, between one another. And there's, there's no getting yeah, away have, from it. Yeah, yeah. I had the pleasure of actually meeting and uh, speaking with uh, Rupert Sheldrake in uh, Vancouver, uh, off the coast of Vancouver at Cortez Island. Uh, he was a guest of one of my friends and, or in fact, my best friend in D.C. And uh, we talked about awesome. this morphic field theory and all of that stuff. Um, but uh, for me, it's like, uh, you know, how do we make it easy for people to remember, right? The, they know the genes and there's a genome, right? Yep. And so uh, essentially your exposome, right, is, is that unit that refers to your environment, your total exposure to the environment. Yeah. So the genome is to your genes and your exposome is to your environment. May, may I, that's I, an can, easy way. I, I, yes. And I can give also a very um, brief genomics is what might happen. Transcriptomics is what appears to be happening. Proteomics is what makes it happen. And metabolomics is what is happening now or has happened. Okay. Like that. I, I like that's, that's what's useful, right? I'm treating someone now, so yeah, I need to know what's happening now.
right? Yeah. And uh, it's very much influenced by, um, you know, I, I use metabolomics as a, as a way to prove it, right now it's at the level of metabolome because it's what we can prove, right? It's what you can show objectively that here, here is what's improving, right? Uh, it, it's like, I don't rely on anything subjective, but usually, and uh, the case is like, I'm feeling better, right? Uh, I, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm feeling better, or I feel so much better. Or some, some um, husbands uh, would go, I'm only here because my wife uh, told me so. But then they would come six months later and they go, Dr. Ted, you know, I thought I was really feeling better, but I didn't know that it was possible to feel this way. So I tell them my goal actually in, in getting you here is to get you addicted to the feeling of wellness. So you know that when you get off balance, you know what yeah. it is that, uh, um, that you're off balance, right? And you, yeah. you emphasize now like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, simple lifestyle changes, right? Uh, yeah. you, like for example, you begin to explain the um, mitochondria, that they're, the, they're bacteria inside your cell. You know, we call them organs organelles, but they actually have bacterial origin, right? They, they have their own DNA. Uh, you know, um, we have a, an, an average about 100 quadrillion of them in our bodies. You know, um, uh, our, our red blood cells used to have them, but um, the mitochondria wow. sacrifice themselves in order for you to have hemoglobin, right? So, um, um, so and they power you up, right? Uh, they power you up. So, you, you know that, um, you know, way before this intermittent fasting, blah, 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 11 years ago, I was already telling my clients that, you know, 12 hours of not eating anything will allow your mitochondria to divide and regenerate, right? Yep, it's, yep. Just like, it's just like having a kitchen that you give a break, exactly. right? You're cooking nonstop, nonstop you know, yeah. and if you keep on eating and eating, you know, we're a shameful species. We have, we have a permission to eat, you know, 24 hours a day. Hours a day, yeah. Is, yeah, so, um, so if you just give it a rest of 12 hours, it will start Generated. The amount of people that have successfully shed 50 pounds or more off of their body by just fasting and burning fat yeah. for extended yeah. periods of time. And it's actually really beautiful to train yourself at young ages to go on a day fast, two day fast, etc. and feel what it's like to burn fat rather than glucose. Yeah. Right. They, see, for me, it's like uh, now you're giving them a scientific basis for doing, you know, uh, yes, at least, yes. Uh, fast. And besides, you know, Alan, it's easier for me, for example, oh, I'm going to change how I eat. No, 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 you can't. What can you promise me that you can do? They can promise me a commitment to the time that they eat. So I said, well, you know, first try uh, a feeding window of, you know, uh, 14 hours. And then uh, the next week, reduce it to 12 hours and then 10 hours, you know. And then, um, you yeah, know, exactly. and, then, and then have a minimum of like, yeah. Of like, um, you know, at, uh, eight hours, you know, that, that's, that's your feeding window. I don't like to use fasting because fasting sounds deprivatory. <laughs> so yeah, 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 exactly. Being, right? So you're yeah. your feeding window. Yeah. And I usually tell them yeah. they can eat whatever they want, but then pretty soon they feel a lot better when they yeah. say, how else can I improve my nutrition? And then you introduce the concept of your microbiota, you know, your, your gut microbiota, they weigh about, you know, uh, two kilos uh, in there. Wow. Uh, yeah. So there's a thousand uh, you know, species and, and, yeah, of bacteria yeah. Yeah. That, so, so that have two million uh, genes, uh, two thousand yeah. genes each, two million genes, which is a hundred times more than we have uh, human wise. So that's that's pretty impressive. And yeah. the more important fact is that we now know that the gut, the gut is actually. Uh, the largest uh, immune system of the body, right? When I was in medical yeah. school, it was the bone marrow. Wow. Now we know it's the gut because, because it is the, the gut bacteria that's actually teaching what's foreign and not foreign, right? Cool. Um, wow. So, so uh, you see these uh, this, uh, uh, reports, right? The case reports where, um, or, or analysis where uh, children born by cesarean section have a lot more allergies and immune mm, problems mm. because they, there's improper activation of yeah. their uh, immune system. So I have some uh, OBGYN, yeah. enterprising OBGYNs who know about this. So they put a gauze on, on the mother's vagina and they do the, they do the uh, cesarean wow. section and they put a gauze over the face just so wow. that there would be an, an inoculation 
of the uh, bacteria that was supposed to be there. Wow. Because what do we find, right? Um, um, what do they find in, in analyzing the, these children's bacteria? They find the skin uh, bacteria of the people who handle them first. Yeah. You know? How messed up is that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, it's not supposed to be there, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, okay. Let, so that's, that's, yeah. So there's, there's, there's bioenergetics with the mitochondria, you know, and then you could teach them about eating, which is microbiota and the gut immune system. Yes, and then yes. you teach, you know, we've spoken about exposomics, their lifestyle, and then you, you t tell them about their uh, sleeping habits, right? Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, sleep hygiene, because lack of, of sleep will actually cause memory problems. But Huge the, the pathology. Main thing, ma yeah. The main thing that it causes, evolution has learned this, is that the first thing that it does for any insult in the body is to get inflamed. Whatever it is, yeah. it will activate your, N your NF kappa B, right? That's the, that's the pathway that will, that's the simple pathway that it will, that it will uh, do because, you know, it has, it has the, um, uh, the counter pathway to that to, to quell it as well, right? So, um, and, and we know that's the first thing that it does, right? So any, any insult, you see your, your inflammatory cytokines are coming up. These are molecules you know, uh, that, that, sign that, uh, that uh, signify that your body is getting inflamed. Even a simple high sensitivity C-reactive protein test will, sh will show you that, right? That your body's inflamed. Even if you're feeling good, et cetera, et cetera, you see your HSCRP is rising, you know that there's stress there somewhere. And then you look back and say, oh my God, you know, I haven't been sleeping uh, really, uh, I've been traveling for the past three days. And I've been in different time zones, and you see your HSCRP shoot up, right? So these are the and you teach them proper sleep hygiene uh, and and so on. And you know, for um, you know that you actually eat uh, 200 calories more the next day when you lack sleep, right? Because the body feels that it's under assault; uh -huh. it needs more energy, and evolutionarily. If the body says you need more energy, so you eat more, right? It's yeah. it's not it's not like having the munchies, but it's <laughs> you actually tend to to eat more, right? And then um, and then yeah. uh, of course uh, this is the, this I networks talk, idea that you're yes. talking. It's so yeah. deeply networked yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and it's at the cellular level, right? And the cells are talking to each other. That's why I say we're looking at the body as an ecosystem of cells. It's the holobiont perspective, right? Is a holobiont uh, perspective where, uh, whereas in illness medicine we look as individuals as part of a population, yep. right? Because your your surgical technique has to work on the population, or your antibiotic has to work on the population. No, we consider you as the population of organisms. Right? Yeah, yeah. So your 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 cells are bacterially derived. Yes, right? yes. Your and your somatic cell is a result of an anaerobic bacteria bacterium and your mitochondria, which is an aerobic bacterium, has a symbiotic relationship in the past, right? So, yeah, yeah. so that's, the, um, uh, that's the idea here. It's um, holonically layered, the human, and then inside of us is all yes. the complex, but then also outside of us is the civilizational influence. So yes. it's yes. Know, layered like that. And, and that's why when you're looking at health, it's impossible to look at you as a person. You have to look at you as a holobiont. You have to look at the, the, the human and all, everything inside and everything in the civilization outside all harmoniously affecting the organism. You, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. in, in, part, in, in fact, part of your exposome is the immediate, um, uh, the immediate uh, uh, bacteria, viruses, etc. around you. Absolutely. Right? So right now, you know, um, coronavirus is part of our exposome. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. There. But exactly. yeah. so, so normally, uh, your own house with, with, will have its own specific, you know, um, environmental yeah. bacteria, right? That's very interesting. And you mentioned earlier something uh, interesting, which is Aubrey de Grey's model. And I, I really yeah. love the guy uh, and the way he thinks, right, uh, as a biogerontologist. But the model that, that he has actually lends itself really well to epigenetics, which is the last pillar. You know, we have seven pillars, right, of yeah. health optimization medicine. In. And the last pillar is genetics. It lends itself really well because um, he says, like, here you are at a younger period, right? Say you're 
21 to 30, your optimal range, right? And then at 30, your testosterone begins to decline. That's why I chose 30, right? Yeah. Because that's when the testosterone begins to, uh, you begin to, to, uh, to fall apart, right? Uh, and um, what, what happens then is that you, the chronic diseases begin to appear, right? Uh, diabetes, you know, metabolic diseases, uh, cognitive decline, you know, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, they all begin happening. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then afterwards, it's a period of disease and then death. Right. And he says, what if we could move the cells back exactly. to before the time that the chronic diseases appear? Yeah. That means that the cells would be at a younger age. Yeah. Right? Yep, 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 yep. And now, of course, you know, uh, you already know about the Yamanaka factors, right? Uh, the Nobel laureate uh, professor Yamanaka of Japan identified four factors that yep. can actually make cells younger yep. and the most recent um the the most recent uh uh finding is that they can now actually make cells younger without erasing their identity meaning they don't forget that they're muscle cells or they don't yeah. forget that they're cells and that's just uh, you know a recent advance but now we're taking a look at can we it's like uh, the the best uh, metaphor that i use is actually quite ugly it's like accumulating plaque on the teeth right and it's your epigenome and and then so your gene, genetic expression gets affected like for example if you smoke and you you have all of these other uh, bad habit bad habits you're 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 um, you know uh, poorly methylated or whatever it is uh, yeah. toxic lifestyle they have you know and and, and um, you um, so when you remove that plaque right then you could move the cells back to the younger age. Now, can we do that? The, the big challenge is that can we do that now for the entire body, right? And, and uh, so, you know, David Sinclair, you know, is uh, do, uh, now doing that for the eye, you know, uh, can we reverse the retinal, uh, the macular degeneration that occurs, right? So, uh, and uh, they, f they found out that the, in, in, uh, in their laboratory animals, they can do so, right, in a, in a closed environment. So it's no longer, it, it's not, no, no longer a period for us. This is no longer an anti-aging period. This is now a period of age reversal. Yeah, right? yeah, rejuvenation and, and through youthful homeostatic capacity. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. But, you know, it takes many years of, you know look clinical metabolomics didn't yeah. catch didn't catch up with with uh medicine until now until you know i, I i'm one of the people who's pushing yeah. hey these tests are yeah. now available yeah, yeah, we yeah. now we yeah. now can have a, a, a better dashboard by yes. which to maintain health right yeah, yeah. i love that's, the dashboard that's why i never use so good. Yeah, that's yeah. why I never use the term disease prevention. That's also illness medicine crap, right? They look at populations, you know, that's why vaccines are within their purview. So, oh, interesting. So, so basically the, the dashboard maybe in the last like hundred years has been slowly getting more and more variables popping up on it. And, right. and now the idea is that there's there's like sometimes like clinical metabolomics can maybe put up um, a significant amount of variables that are really crystal clear and crisp. And the thing is, is that um, your role and a lot of the time people's roles are to just grab people and say, hello, you can add 20 more variables to your dashboard now. Please go do that for all of your clients as soon as possible. Stop waiting. 